If you're a Blender beginner and don't know about this modifier, you're making landscapes the hard way. This one add-on to create landscapes plus the new Blender modifier is gonna save you hours of work and with this one setup, you can create unlimited variations. So for step one, let's quickly create our landscape starting from a simple plane and adding a ground material to it. Before getting started, just make sure you're using the latest Blender 5.0. So for the landscape, I'm using this ANT Landscape Blender extension, which I'll link in the bio. And as you can see, it has a lot of different options. So just play around with this to create different types of landscape. Then I just added a camera looking down on the ground and use an SGRI to light the environment. Now you can grab all the ground material, grass, flowers, etc. that we want to use on our landscape. You can use the good old GeoScatter as well as it has really high quality assets. Here I'm using the GeoScatter plant library to add the ground material but you can just add any ground material here as well. And finally adding a random cube in the middle for contrast. You can grab the starter file from our Patreon as well to follow along with the step two, the scatter modifier, where we'll use this new Blender modifier to scatter some objects on our ground. So in Blender, just import all the objects that we want to add to our ground, the grass, rocks, or any flowers that you want. Here, I'm just adding one grass and one flower model from the plant library. Now to get started with the scattering, make sure the ground is selected and then go to the modifiers, search for scatter on surface, which is the new modifier in Blender. And then we can use this to scatter any objects. I'm gonna use the picker tool to select the grass model. And as you can see, it's automatically added on our ground. We can increase the density to increase the number of grass hair on our ground. You can play around with the seed value to randomize the location. And you can also change the axis of each object. Now I'm gonna go to the scale here and reduce the scale a little bit so it can match the real world size of the grass and then increase the density a little bit. In the randomization options, you can randomize the location, rotation, and even the scale of each object so it looks much more natural. Finally, if you want to show grass in just specific sections, we can use the masking option here as well. Press plus to create a new scatter mask and create a new image. Now with the ground selected, we can go to the texture paint mode. Make sure in the texture slot, single image is selected and then select the new scatter mask that we just created. Select the add UVs button if there is no UV on your ground. And now we can use the white brush to paint and select the areas where we want the grass to be present. After you're done with that, we can just go back to our normal object mode, but make sure you press save all images. Now with the ground selected, if I change any other options, you can see it'll be affected in the masked section only. And here's how the render view looks like. Now we're gonna go through two different methods to scatter more than one object and make it look even better. So for the first one, you can just duplicate the scatter modifier that we just created and just remove the previous object to replace it with another one. Here, I just updated the object to be the flower one, reducing its density a little bit. And as you can see, both the objects are added. So for the second method, let's delete the previous modifier that we added for now. You can select all your 3D models and add it to a new collection by using M shortcut. Here I added both these in a new collection named scatter. And if I add scatter on surface modifier again, I can just switch the instance option to collection and then select my collection with all the models in it. Make sure to select the pick instance and it'll reset the transformation. And now increasing the density scale or any other option, it'll apply it to all of the models that are in your collection. So these are the two methods to scatter more than one object. I like the original one better as you can have more control on each individual object. And for the final step, creating variation and different ideas with our setup. You can easily update the lighting and the HDRI that you're using and it'll create different moods. Here I'm just updating the HDRI to experiment with different lightings. In this one, I changed the grass and flower objects to a rock landscape and it works really nicely. So you can easily play around with the lighting and the different objects to create unlimited variation. And this is how the final artwork looks like. 